And then they'll be on the road for about 10 days. They're not back here at home until the 16th uh, of this month. I'm bumping up the pound cake sports break this week because comedian Chris Franjola is uh, his flight is getting in a little bit later. So we're going to do the pound cake sports break in about a half an hour. We'll do that closer to five o'clock. And then at five o'clock, it's going to be the very last trip for you to try to get out to our alter ego festival. That is next month in Anaheim at the Honda Center. And uh, we're giving away kind of 11th hour trips. But I'm pretty sure the one that I have for you at 5 o'clock is the very last one, unless they pull more out of a hat. But it is sold out. It's the 1975 and Paramore and the Black Keys. And, what? Sorry. And uh, a bunch of other bands. Some 41 and Bush, who was just here for the triumphant return of Buzzard Fest. So 5 o'clock, I'll have that trip for you. And then Chris Frangiola will join us. Um, around 5.20, he is doing one show only tonight at Hilarities. It sounds like some kind of routing date, maybe. That would make sense. But if you're a fan of his, uh, you should go see him tonight. Quite frankly, even if you're not a fan, maybe maybe he's not on your radar. You're not going to have a bad time, right? He's funny. Uh, he's easy on the eyes. And uh, whatever else. Uh, you couldn't have a better Wednesday night. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what people are doing on Wednesday night. I'm babysitting. Babysitting. Yeah. I'm going to be at East End hosting my weekly show there. Babysitting whom? My nieces. Oof. 11 and 5. Oof. So the the 11 year old doesn't really need much. She's pretty self sufficient. She's mm-hmm. on her phone. But the five year old, she is demanding. Board games and coloring and very hands on. And you got to do all this because you're leaving. Yes. You are going to be chained to a rock for the next month. <laughs> I know. I know. I like it, though. Get my time in. Hey, Alan and gang. So just want to make sure I understand things correctly here. Mary is leaving the show, moving to Tokyo, and will never be heard from again. Did, did I have that right? Cool. Thanks for the update. What's he thanking me for? Asking a question. I can give him an answer. Yeah. That's wrong. I'm gotten not. It, you've gotten it completely wrong. I am not opening a slap boxing restaurant <laughs> in Tokyo. <laughs> well, devotion accuracy. I had a couple of language nerds hit me up and go, um, that voiceover was Chinese because I oh. pulled it off Chinese television. And um, no, listen, I don't know. I, I don't speak Mandarin. Or any of the other many, many Chinese dialects. I just pulled the clip off of Chinese television. They're making fun of Japan, too. They're like, well, you look at these sons of bitches. Not too far away from us in Japan. Well, listen. However you got to get your kicks, nothing wrong with it. One of our bureau chiefs in Tampa got me hip to the fact that they are going to be, what's the paper in Tampa? I don't know if they just have one. Tampa Times. No, it's like the Tampa Enforcer. or the Florida I, Man. No. They're going to print people's grievances for Festivus. Ooh. Tampa Bay Times is one of the papers. That's what I said. You said the Times? I said the Tampa Times. I thought, mm. It was a joke, but I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you were right. The Tampa Bay Times. No, I thought, what's the big paper in Tampa? Tampa Times, sounds like. Mm-hmm. Nah, it's like the, it's the one I'm thinking of. Maybe it is the Tampa Bay Times. Wow. You're welcome. Oh, I was thinking of the Tampa Tribune, but I think they got bought a, anyway, who cares? Uh, Tampa Bay Times. Sounds like you care. I really do. <laughs> Why? Uh, because I like to know what newspapers... <laughs> You know, they're they're Keep going away. away. So, many, <laughs> so many of them are going away. Newspapers. It's a goddamn travesty. I understand it is a function of business. I get it. But like when I go home and get a copy of the Tribune, I'm like, oh my God. Look at even, that. The, even the Sunday Tribune, if he's like a phone book, right? You'd sit there. I did that for a lot longer than I probably should have for someone my age is get the Sunday Tribune, and you go through it. It used to be like a phone book. Now, you know, it's like a it's like a, a regular magazine or like a thickness of a magazine. 
You know I like my papers thick. Like thick boys on Sunday. Anyway, the Tampa Bay Times is doing a airing of grievances for Festivus. So anybody who wants to uh, submit something, you absolutely can. You know, this got taken from Seinfeld, but a lot of people, if you know your Seinfeld lore, you know that basically every single episode of that show was written by a revolving door of writers who would create scripts based on their own experiences. Larry David did not have nine seasons. I know he's gone for a couple, but he didn't have nine seasons of ideas by his own admission. He's like, I needed writers who could bring stuff to this show, whatever crazy stories they had. And that's why over the course of the life of that show, there were so many writers. Because kind of once, once they had outlived their usefulness, they were gone. It was a great uh, springboard to other things. A lot of people came from other shows. There were people who were on The Simpsons that went to Seinfeld, vice versa. But one of the writers who wrote the Festivus episode, which I think was in the very last season, um, was when uh, Kramer went on strike or the strike ended at the bagel shop or something. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Frank Costanza, yeah. yeah, told him about Festivus. Because that writer who wrote that, that is what his family celebrated growing up. His dad had made up a holiday. Just like Frank Costanza. So that's where that was taken from. So Seinfeld didn't make it up. One of their writers wrote an entire episode about his family's weird holiday. That's cool, though. How he had grown up uh, mortified that they didn't celebrate a traditional holiday, that his dad had just made something up. And they were like, did you really have a pole in the feats of strength? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. December 23rd is Festivus, a Festivus for the rest of us. And so uh, they're in Tampa. And you have to live in Tampa. They'll take it from anywhere. So if you want to submit your own grievances, now this could be something that the plain dealer could pick up. I don't know that the Tampa Bay Times are alone in this. A woman from St. Petersburg complained, when my 12-year-old son calls me bro, Oh, my God. Last I checked, I was still mom. Well, my nieces and nephews are over for Thanksgiving at my sister's house, and there's twin 10-year-olds and then an 11-year-old, and every other word out of their mouth was, bruh, bruh, bruh. Like, every time you ask them to do anything. Where are they grabbing or, that? I, I think it's just online. YouTube and stuff. YouTube, yeah, YouTube TikTok, TikTok. Like, oh, yeah. everyone is, everything is, bruh, bruh. <laughs> You're not 10, though. Right. I'm like, Riley, go get me. Hey, can you hand me that water? Bruh. I'm like, dude, it just hand me the water. What are you doing? <laughs> Bruh. You got to complain. I don't have that at Casa Cox. She's, she must be watching different stuff. She's a little younger, too, though. Yeah, but she's a pisser, too. So if she found bruh, she'd be throwing <laughs> bruh out. Hmm. Well, if you got a gripe, you can submit it to these people, and they'll put it up there. There's a Google form you can fill out. One guy in Canada said, why do you include the stumps in my bagged lettuce? I ain't eating no romaine stumps. They're trying to get the weight up. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to get the what? They, they want it to, they, each bag has to weight a certain amount. Is that why they put the and stumps so they in? they put the stumps in, they so have to put as much good lettuce in there. Oh, yeah. Nice. Well, none of that lettuce is good, by the way. Them bag salads. Holy crap. It's like the number one thing you're supposed to stay away from. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. you get E. You coli or mm -hmm. something. Somebody out there wiping their ass with them stumps. Well, as soon as you, yeah, you get it, and if you don't eat it the moment you get home, it's slimy. Yeah. Damn, Alan, flipping through channels and now newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm, no, I don't currently, I haven't read newspapers in a long time. I haven't had a newspaper subscription. But for a long time, when I would go home, and it was only a couple times a year, I would buy a Sunday Tribune because it was kind of a, a ritual in my house. Reading the Sunday Tribune. You'd go through Parade Magazine, and maybe you'd, uh, you know, my grandma used to cut out the family circus Aww. and put it on the fridge. Aww. That's a grandma thing she to do. She the ice box? Yeah. <laughs> she did not. Nope. She didn't do that. The couch was the Davenport, but uh, the freezer was not the, uh, the ice box. But she had a, not only did she have a family circus, which, of course, always came in a circle, in your funnies. They were the funnies still, not the comics. They were yeah. the funnies. Not only did she have the family circus on the fridge, it was laminated 
Nice. Family servant, uh, family circus. Pischetti and meatballs. Classic. So, no, I haven't read the newspaper. I mean, you know, I've been here a couple of weeks. Uh, it'll be 14 years for me here in Cleveland. I've never had a, a newspaper subscription here in Cleveland. But I don't I've even... I've never had a newspaper subscription like that was... For me in my entire life. Like I've had I delivered the Tribune in college. How do you like that? On your <laughs> In my dorm. With your bike that had a big wheel on the front. No, no, no. <laughs> in my the all the dormitories. We the stand newspaper. on the corner saying extra Wexy, Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Japs attack Pearl Harbor. <laughs> it wasn't that. No, every dorm they wanted students to deliver the paper. And I was the guy. I go, yeah, I'll do it. And they give you like two hundred bucks a week. Now That's you had good money. You had to, yeah, it wasn't bad, right? You had to get up at the crack of ass because they dropped the papers off at four. So and did you have to assemble them all? No, no, no. Okay, because uh-uh. that was the thing that kept me from doing a paper route. It would have been a driving paper route because I lived in the country, but you had to put everything together too. No, it, like all the sections came as. Like, here's the front page. And, yeah. and so you had to, like, assemble everything. That's so much time. And yeah. then take them out. And I was just like, no, I'm not doing that. So I'd go down to the lobby every morning when they drop them off. And there were just, you know, the massive stacks of papers in the plastic, like, zip tie stuff. I'd take them up. And I'd cut them. And then I had the list of all the students that were subscribed to the Tribune. And I would drop them off, and then I'd get right back into bed. A list of dorks. <laughs> I mean, it was the early 90s, just so kidding. people were still reading the newspaper, you know, but... Um, Why they just use the internet? Huh? Yeah. Why didn't you just Went around it? yet, Bill? The internet wasn't invented in the 90s. NASA was using it, but it wasn't... Uh, people weren't using it in class. Hmm. I thought you it's worked at NASA. Excuses. No, I just shopped there. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I mean, 800 bucks a month? Yeah. yeah. For getting up and literally In doing 15 days. minutes worth of work? I mean, adjusted for inflation? It's like a million dollars. Right. Mm-hmm. From the 30s, yeah. yeah. 90s, Mary. Oh, sorry. But the 90s were 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. The early 90s. Yeah, the early one. It's crazy. Al, I tell Mary my two daughters do the same thing, bro. Oh, bruh. 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 Mm. It's just like whiny. Mm-hmm. <sighs> whiny makes life fun. What is it wrong does with you? Not. It does. Stop being a child. Ask someone who whines. They, they, I'm they, asking you. Stop being a child. Will you stop being a child? No. I, I, and anybody whiny. that whines is the least fun person I've ever been around. For mm-hmm. you. But for us, well, we are who you're talking <laughs> <Right>. to. <laughs> you're not sitting in a room whining to yourself. You guys don't whine. No. I whine, I whine sometimes. All right. Give me an example. Me? No, no, no. Pound cake. Whine about what? If you're incredulous that we, grown-ass people, don't whine, give me an example. Like Maybe you, we're misunderstanding Like you, you got to go to the BMV and you got to get your license renewed or you got to do a registration. You're like, oh, man, I don't want to stay in this line. Oh, it's going to be all day and they got to take my stupid little picture. Why can't I just keep the old one? This is in your brain or you're verbalizing this? Both. Both. I would think one would suffice. No. You're standing in line with other people who also don't want to be there and you're going. like a stupid number. Uh, What else do you have going on? And then you get up there and you're like, sorry, this is the wrong paperwork. Oh, man, bro. (laughs) (laughs) What you mean? I've been waiting here for 45 minutes and you tell me I have the wrong paper? I love the people who don't have the right paperwork. It never fails. They tell you what you need. If you just go online, they tell you. What you need. Bitch, I printed out a bill. This ain't good enough. These women behind the counter, and everybody bitches and moans that the ladies at the DMV are like a pain in the ass. It's like, because they're dealing with morons all day long. Is it DMV or BMV? I mean, I, I, here's, here's a BMV. BMV. I've, I always knew here's it was a DMV. B- yeah. Same thing. I mean, um, but. It's a bureau here. Bureau. Oh. We had a department. Mm, bureau's more official. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Just. You go online, you figure out what papers you need, and then those are the ones you bring. Mm. Oh, God. I get frustrated. Think of, all the, I, think of all the whining you'll save yourself, though. Well, just whine about something else. 
like when I leave the BMV, then I want to. I'm hungry on the way home. Like, man, why are all these line? Like, there's a line wrapped around Wendy's. Like, listen, it was a whole genre of music for a while called pop punk. Hey, so you're not easy. alone in this. Mm. There it is. You just put a riff under that, and you've probably got a hit song. I have to do this about break 20 early. years ago. <laughs> Emo is different than pop punk. Emo is no, not. Pop punk um, is not as whiny as mm, the pop punk. It's all whiny. Pop punk's not whiny like uh, emo music is. Emo whiny. music, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll play some whiny music if you mm-hmm. want. I don't. Well, listen. Um, yeah, you do you, Boo Boo. You uh, whine and see, but it, it, that's cathartic for you. I mean, it doesn't solve anything. I mean, it's, yeah, but it's something it, it you know, is makes you feel better. It's getting yep. It's getting it out. I let it out. Yo, know. mm, I don't want to do this. I got anxiety. No, but it's one thing Anxiety like about letting it out BMV? or venting, but like constant whining and you like but yeah. also if you know you have to do something, just do it. Like what's what's the problem? Yeah. You don't want to. I wait to the last minute. That's your problem. I know. So you're creating a my, problem. Well no one wants to touch my vagina. But I then I whine about uh, why I am the way I am. Like why am I like this? Oh, I knew dude. <laughs> I knew, I knew for two months I had to do this, and why did I wait to the last oh, minute? Oh, man. This is my toxic trade. If this is a thousand years ago, somebody would have taken a rock to his head by now. Man, I guess This is the one thing that's going to motivate me to invent time travel. Right. <laughs> I just am the way I am, and I don't know how to change it. I get really whiny around my period. Where I'll like, I will start to annoy you know, myself. I get whiny around your period too. I know. I'll start to annoy myself. Where I'll like, kind of what he's describing. Where I'll be like, I'm hungry, but I don't know what I want, and I don't want to go to get anything, but I want to cook anything, and I don't have anything here. And but I at just- least that, listen, to give you a wide berth there, at least that's extenuating circumstances. My body's playing tricks on me. Periods are no fun. I have to assume. Yeah. But there's yeah. There's Pound cake's not having a period. He just be? sucks. Oh. <laughs> I'm having just a period whining. in my life that's really tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all of it. <laughs> I was gonna say, when did that period begin and when is it ending? I don't know, but you guys are bullying me. <laughs> <laughs> my thought is that people do that because at some point it worked for them. They got something from that, and then it just became a habit. Oh, for sure. But I well, don't see that. How did that ever work for you? I think it depends on how self-aware you are. Because when I'm whining or pouting, I know what I'm doing. And I'm like, I just want to pout for a little bit before I fix this problem. But I'm pouting, fix- is, pouting is silent. Right. But I'm going to fix the problem. I'm just going to pout and whine and be a little pissy. But it will get done. But for right now, I need to pout and whine. That's usually how I do it. But that's kind of what Cody's saying. I know I have to go to the DMV. I don't have to be happy about it. Yeah. Alan, I just went to the BMV to change my license from New York to Ohio, and I was pleasantly surprised. There was no bulletproof glass. Most people had regular clothing on instead of SpongeBob pajamas. There you go. <laughs> and the ladies were super nice. Yeah. Mm, his experience was better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, give him this. He will find something to yeah, whine about. Exactly. Even if something doesn't present itself organically. All right. Now, as I go to break... At least do me the courtesy or or at least promise, indulge me that you won't whine through the pound cake sports break. Do the whole thing whining. Don't get it out before. No, do the whole thing whining. Don't do. Mm. Yeah, get it out. Of the it's r- really important for me to make my mark on this show. In the headlines today. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, we're going to do the pound cake sports break uh, shortly. Comedian Chris Frangiola will join us a little closer to 5.30 at 5 o'clock. I will have that last trip to L.A. for you for our Alter Ego Festival coming up in January. And if you want to text for anything else, 35192 or get to us at allencoxshow.com. The Alan Cox Show 